In this video, I'll show you the procedure involved in creating the gable end on the roof. The gable end is this object which is kept on the roof and this is normally used to promote ventilation, lighting. It also improves the aesthetic appeal of the roof. So let us go back to our original drawing. In this drawing, we have uh, the 3D mode layer which is currently active. Before I start creating the gable end, I'll freeze the 3D mold layer. So I have frozen it. Now I have to calculate the height of the gable. So the height of the gable is roughly taken as half of this roof height. So I should take the roof height first. I'll go to dist command. You know that it is an enquiry command which will let you measure the distance between any two points. And I'll select the first point as this point and the second point I would like to define using point filters. So I'll go to point filters and I'll take dot xy off uh, this point and z I'll take from below. Now you have got this height as, uh, you press the F2 key, you have got the height as 173.2 uh, and I'll take half of it. Uh, so I'll divide uh, 173.2 uh, with uh, say 2 and uh, you have got the answer as 86.6 uh, so we'll roughly take it as 80. So you know that uh, the command prompt of AutoCAD can be used as a calculator. Uh, in this divisional operation I have started with the left parenthesis then F slash that will act as a divisional operator then two arguments. Okay so we have got the height now I should draw a line over here with the height of the gable. Before you draw the line, you have to align the UCS here. So I'll go to UCS command and I'll go to face option and I'll select this face and the UCS got aligned with that face. Now just give an enter to accept that UCS. You can draw a polyline now from this midpoint. So I've started from this midpoint and the height of that polyline is equal to the height of the gable which you have obtained just now. So I'll give the height of the gable as 80 centimeter. Now I should draw a polyline uh, starting from this endpoint to this perpendicular. And this polyline will uh, is used to get the inclination of this roof. So I'll move this polyline now with this as the base point and I'll move it uh, to align with this endpoint. Now we have got the same inclination of the roof because you know that uh, the cable as well as the roof will have the same inclination. Now I have to cut off this excess portion. So I'll go to polyline command and I'll use a cutting edge over here because this is a solid object so that edge cannot be used as a cutting edge. So I must draw another one. And now I can go to trim command and I'll select this as the cutting edge and just give an enter uh, this is the object to trim. Now you can erase the cutting edge, it's no longer required. Now you can mirror this particular line onto this side. So I'll give mirror command and I'll select this as the object to mirror and I'll use this endpoint as the base point on mirroring and I'll turn the ortho mode on and I'll pick a point right on top so that I'll get a, uh, this object mirrored over here. So uh, that triangle is made. In fact, you have made a triangle for the gable. You can uh, sketch a profile using a polyline over here. So I'll start from here, then I'll select all the endpoints and I'll just give close. Okay, now I can extrude this profile onto this side. So I give extrude command. I've selected that profile. You can just move the cursor and you take the cursor onto a point in such a way that uh, you can just turn the O snap off. Okay, you can just pick a point roughly over here so that it almost goes inside this existing roof. Okay, so you can just hide it and you can see the result. Now you can see that this gable which you have created uh, merges with the existing roof in a particular plane. Now you have to find out that plane wherein these two objects merge each other. For that, you can give interfere command. So I'll type interfere. Interfere. So interfere command uh, retains the common volume 
which is shared by both the objects taking part in the interference operation. So it will ask you to select the first set of objects. So I have selected that. In the first set there is only a single object. You can select that. Just give an enter. Then it will ask you to select the second set of objects. Even in the second set you have only a single object. You can select that and give an enter. So you will get an interference uh, checking dialog box. Here it will display you that first set is, there is only one object in the first set and uh, there is uh, another single object in the second set. Now delete interference objects created on close. You can just disable this. So that your original objects will be retained. So I'll just give close. Now the software has created an interference solid. So this is the common volume, the highlighted area. Now what you're going to do is, you're going to subtract this interference solid from the existing gable which you have created. So I give subtract command and you can select the main gable which you have created. Just give an enter. Then from this you're going to subtract the interference solid. Just give an enter. Now you have got this gable as a separate object and you have got the plane where it merges with the existing roof. Now you can transfer this object to 3D roof layer. Now and you can keep the 3D roof layer as the active layer. Now we have to create a recess here because there is a recessed area in the plane of the gable. So I'll start with the polyline and I'll draw a profile here. I'll activate O snap and I'll draw a profile here. And I'll give offset and I'll give an offset distance of uh, 10 centimeter inside. Then I'll give extrude minus 10 in the negative z axis direction. Then I'll give a subtract. And from this object, I'll subtract the solid. Now you can shade to see that you have made a recess here. Now you have to create uh, the frames and the glass inside the gable end. So we have to, we will keep that in the 3D mode layer. So I'll activate 3D mode layer, which was frozen before. And you can make that as a current layer. Now I'll draw a polyline inside this. And I'll offset this through a distance of 5 cm. Then I'll extrude these two profiles and I give a height of 5 cm then I'll subtract from the outer solid the inner one now we have made a frame inside now there are some spikes there is a vertical member and there are two inclined members those spikes we have to create inside so for that I'll start with a polyline from here to perpendicular then offset 2.5 units to both sides. It's a similar procedure which you have done for the window frame. Then the central member you can erase. Now you can connect these two endpoints with polylines. Then pre edit, class, join, all. So only those objects which are having end to end contact will get joined. And now you can extrude this profile. I'll give a height of extrusion of 5. So the vertical member is created. Now we can create two inclined members. So for that, you can just uh, draw a polyline from here, from this mid to this mid. Then you can again offset and 2.5 as offset distance to both sides. Now you can see that this particular uh, line is to be extended slightly forward. So you can just do that trial and error like this, but you have to turn off the O snap when you do that. Okay, I have done that. Now you can just connect these two endpoints after turning on the O snap. Now you can just uh, go to pre edit, last, join all, and you can just give a close. Now you can extrude this profile through a height of 5. Okay, now you can mirror this inclined member. 
about an axis about a vertical axis and you can pick two points to define the axis here now you can just give union to combine all these objects to a single object now you can just shade it and you can take a look so you have made a gable inside this gable there is a glass coming so that the glass should also be created and that glass can be kept in the same layer as that of the 3d window glass so just make uh, that layer as a current layer uh, switch over to display representation to wireframe now you can just uh, draw a polyline just trace a polyline inside okay i'll just close it now you can just give extrude and you can give a small height of extrusion of say 0.5 or something now you can just shade it to see the presence of that class Now what you're going to do is you have to keep it onto this end point. But you can see that you can have more than one gables on this residence. You can have one here, one in the opposite side and all. So since this object is to be repetitively used in this project, you can block this. So I'll give block command. Okay. And I'll give a block name as a gable for this. And I'll give the insertion point over here. I'll select the insertion point over here and I'll select the objects to be blocked. Okay, I'll select all the objects which are to be blocked. Here, uh, there is an option called delete. When you select delete, this particular object will get deleted. These are profiles which have created before. So these profiles can be erased. That's they are no longer required. Okay, uh, so we have blocked it. If you want to know more information on blocking, you can refer a lesson on blocks, which I have uploaded. Uh, now I'll insert this gable. I'll go to a gable and just give OK. So this block is here and you can select this as insertion point. You have got it inserted here. Now this is a single object. Now you can have another gable, another version of the same gable on this face. So before that, you have to, before inserting the block, you have to align the UCS on this face. So I go to UCS command and I'll go to face option and I'll select this face. Just give an enter to accept that orientation of the UCS. Now we can insert it, this gable onto this end point. Now we can shade the model and take a look. Sometimes you can see that uh, this wall span and this wall span may be different. So in that case, the size of this gable uh, may be different from this size. So how will you change the size of this gable? So if whenever you want to change the size of the gable according to the uh, span of the wall, you can easily do that by using a scale command. For example, if this uh, wall span is small, if it happens to be small, uh, then what you can do is you can just give a scale command and you can select this gable and you can use this as the end point. Uh, that is a base point and you can just give a scale factor of uh, any desired value for example if I want to si reduce the size of that gable by half just give 0.5 you can see that the size of the gable uh, got uh, reduced by half and it perfectly merges with the existing roof and suppose if you want to scale it you give a higher value for a scale factor just give scale and uh, select this and uh, I'll give say three times the uh, value uh, even in this case, it perfectly merges with the existing roof. So that is the advantage of using this procedure. So I'll undo this scale command and I'll come back to the previous size. So this is how you make a gable end on the existing roof.